Hi, I'm Doug Black. I'm editor in chief at Inside HPC. And today at SC20, virtual SC20, we are with Mike Scriber. He's a senior director at Supermicro. Uh, Mike, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for this great opportunity to have a chat. All right, great. So tell us a little bit about uh, what Supermicro will be uh, highlight highlighting at the conference this week. Well, at this conference this week, we're going to have two talks. Um, I'm doing both of them. And what they're on is three really different projects that we had the opportunity to do with Livermore National Labs. Uh, one of them was a large scale, over 1,500 nodes and 26 rack, um, high performance, dense solution. Another one was an expansion on a DPU solution uh, where we added about almost 1,000 more GPUs to that system. And then the third one was a large memory system. So we're going to talk about those three systems. OK. Tell us a little bit about who these solutions are designed for and the, the unique advantages that uh, Supermicro is offering. Yeah, the first one, let's talk about Ruby first. Ruby was this over 1,500 nodes that they wanted um, to do uh, a, a bunch of their general purpose uh, computing and also uh, COVID-19 research. So they came to us and they, they said, uh, this, is, this is the requirements we have. Fortunately, we have a great relationship with them. We've been working with them for a long time. They knew that we had a really wide variety of products. So that's a huge advantage that Supermicro has is just a huge wide variety of products. So they thought, okay, if we go to Supermicro, we know there'll be time to market with the latest and greatest uh, processors, the latest and greatest uh, products. And, and they can also search through that wide variety of products to pick the best one. For, for uh, Ruby in particular, because of the processor wattage, because they wanted to keep the memory to about two gigabytes per core, um, and, and because of liquid cooling that they also wanted, the Twin Pro really fit perfectly for that product. It gave us the capability to do um, very, very dense solutions. So what that means is we could pack a lot of those twin pros into one system. And I think we got about 64 nodes in each rack. So that gave us great density. With that usually becomes some thermal issues, right? If you, not so much within the system, but a thermals for the air conditioning system. But with liquid cooling, we were able to cool the vast majority of that thermals through liquid cooling, which gives you really, really great um, efficiencies and also allows you to have great density. So that's Ruby. Uh, moving on to Corona. And, and it's funny because it was a project called Corona long before we had COVID-19 in Corona. Um, it was a project that had uh, four GPUs per system. And they came to us and they said, we really want to expand this so, so that we can get it to about 11 petaflops, which is, which is what we were able to do by adding almost 1,000 GPUs. And initially, we showed them a system that we had, and it was an eight GPU system. And we thought, well, we can just put four GPUs in the system. But we talked through that and thought through that, and they realized the benefit that they would get by being able to put eight GPUs. And the GPUs that we used were just cutting edge. I mean, we had just completed validating those GPUs in that system. So it was a cutting edge system that they really wanted to really get the maximum capability. So they ended up going with eight GPUs per, per server, per node, and, and added, um, I think, 121 nodes to that. They got them up to, to 11 petabytes. And, and I should mention, we were at six petaflops, not petabytes, 11 petaflops. And for Ruby, that whole system was six petaflops. So a very large system. Now, the last one is Mammoth. And like I said, these didn't come all at once. They were kind of, first they came with Ruby, and then a couple weeks later, they said, we need Corona. And a couple weeks later, they said, we need Mammoth. But they kept coming back to us because they knew we had such a wide variety of products. So with Mammoth, they wanted a large memory system. Uh, they had some scenarios where there were large data sets. And with these large data sets, um, you, you need large memory. So they wanted two, uh, two terabytes of memory in each system. And normally, when you want a large memory system, you would go for like a four-way system where you have four processors in, in a node. 
And that's pretty standard. But we also realized that we had an ultra system, our ultra system that had dual sockets with 32 DIMMs. And with 32 DIMMs, we could take 64 gigabyte DIMMs, which are very price competitive with the 32 gig DIMMs now, and use those to get two terabytes in one system without being really expensive. Because the minute you go with a four-way system, it becomes really expensive with all those processors. So it was a great solution for them. In this case, it not only um, was it 32 DIMMs, but also two processors, all in a one U box. So we could make it very, very dense. And we had 64 of those systems and, and ended up working out where they significantly increased the amount of increased the amount of processing that they could do, but reduced the amount of time. So they could really drop the amount of time that it takes to run these large data sets. Okay, uh, great, really interesting on all three fronts. We we actually wrote a story this week about uh, Mammoth, and um, so great stuff there. Um, it, and Mike, looking ahead to twenty twenty one, what are what are some interesting things that might be coming up from Supermicro next year? Twenty twenty one is going to be an exciting year. There are a lot of new processors that are coming out in twenty twenty one, and naturally, we want to be cutting edge. Always want to be cutting edge, so. We will be there. We have already designed all of the systems for the next set of processors that are coming out. Unfortunately, I, I'm not supposed to name them. I can't talk too much about them under NDA. But as soon, just as soon as those processors go to market, then we will absolutely be there with a whole line of products. We have a wide variety of products and we have redesigned that that wide variety of products for the next family line and the next generation. And so you'll see those coming out in 2021. And there's some really exciting things going on and new features that are going to be there that are really, uh, I, I, I hate to keep using the word exciting, but it is. It's exciting to see all of the great stuff that will happen in 2021. Okay, Mike. Well, thanks so much for that update. Uh, great to be with you again. And, um, you know, best of luck to Supermicro at the conference this week. Thank you very much. It was great having this talk with you. Powered by Supermicro and Intel. Learn more at supermicro.com.